Can I tell you a break? Break means watch yourself at all times. Shake hands now. Be the best man to win. Good luck to both of you. Welcome, Fight Fans, into a special episode of That's Boxing Podcast. That's Boxing. I'm Dustin. I got Coach here, who's right here. fresh off of a motorcycle journey around... Where, where did you go? Where? Yeah, I went all over, man. California, Nevada, Oregon. Crazy. Took the long way, back roads. Forgot about boxing for a couple minutes. Yeah. But any, I'm back. Any close calls? Nah, man. Easy, easy breezy. Smooth sailing. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay, I'm sure off air he's going to tell me, oh, I almost died 17 no, times. No, the, the safest place to ride a motorcycle is in the middle of fucking nowhere. So get off the freeway, take the inter- take the state highways through the back roads. There's nobody out there, there's no cops, you can haul ass, and you're safe. Great advice from your boxing coach slash serial killer. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I got my coach's camo on today in recognition of you. Dude, you know? got to stay hidden at all times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hide, hide, hide your legs. Just like our podcast subscribership. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? You guys got to like, follow, and share it all, you know, pass it on. Hit us up with a review. A nice review would be... Even a bad review. Just do that's something. That's true. Yeah, just bad controversy. There, yeah, that's, what, that's what we need. Well, I feel like we got a lot to cover on this Ugh. show. We got two cards that happened over the weekend. Did you split screen or did you go A to B? I I had both running the whole time, and I just switched the volume back and forth depending what, on where what, I was paying attention. What's your strategy? You got like TV and then computer, and one gets priority. Well, I think you know that I don't have DAZN. Oh right, right. I forget. Me and DAZN had a falling out. We got a pirate over yeah, here. Yeah, turned out she was a DAZN was a gold digger trying to get all my money, so I, I had to break up with her. But I, I go see her every now and then. I just don't pay. I know. bet if we calculated the number of fights you get, because what's DAZN two fifty a year? Mm-hmm. And you divided it by the number of free fights. It's probably the most economic streaming platform. Probably the most value. You're just a hater. No, absolutely not. They got a lot of free fights. Yeah, so does ESPN. Well, that's and true. they don't charge you to turn the regular fights on. That's true, but you got to pay for like cable to get ESPN. Nah, no, I don't think so. We I mean, just, yeah, you don't that. know because you're streaming. You're stealing everything. I don't know. You're hey, a thief. Man, hey, the old lady handles the bills. All right, yeah. I don't know. I- <laughs> Now the truth. Now the truth <laughs> comes out. Well, we got two two cards to break down. I actually I watched uh, the fights very special with my parents who were in town who oh, are wow. not huge boxing fans, but no pressure. I've my, watched a fight with your dad before. That's true. Yeah, yeah. They've watched a fight or two, but you know, not a it's not a regular thing there in town. And my dad said he's gonna listen to this episode of the podcast, so don't fuck it up. All right, right? Shout we out gotta pops. Be, yeah, shout out pops. Um, we gotta break down both those cards. We got some news, big fights that got made, and then we gotta look ahead to we got another double header between top rank and zone coming up this weekend. Couple couple solid fights. We're gonna have to choose between the split screen or staying up till two AM again. Man, and and I'm working a fight this weekend too, so I got a real busy boxing weekend. Right, so you're gonna have two cell phones out while you're in the corner. Mm-hmm. Kinda, yeah. Yeah. I like it. Well, uh what should we do first? Should we do the top rank card? Yeah, stop. Let's start with with the TO. Okay, TO. Uh, one one fight I wanted to run through real quick. It was on the uh, on the undercard before for the broadcast was Rodriguez uh, versus Rodrigo. You got this dude Rodrigo in there throwing absolute haymakers, looking for this one big shot. And dude must the the ref was earning his pay, calling almost everything not a knockdown because he was falling over his front foot throwing these punches and. For the listenership, I wanted you to just take a second to coach people up about what it, what it means when people say to plant your feet and, uh, and and throw in a punch if you should ever throw yourself off balance like that when you miss. Because it was wild to see. Yeah, he, he put himself off balance and, and clean over at least one time. They got ruled a slip because he launched himself over. Well, it was a Southpaw Orthodox showdown. Mm-hmm. And so that backhand from the Orthodox fighter is pretty far away. And... and to make up for it, you'll often see these guys will shift forward. Their right foot will come with their right hand to try to cover the distance. Like stepping through with the punch. Stepping through with the punch. A shifting blow. is And a shifting with the punch isn't a bad thing if you do it at the right time. And if you do it intentionally, so you land in a balanced stance. Understanding that you switch stances now. If you start as right. orthodox and you throw your right side of your body forward, so your right foot comes past your left, you'll land in a, in a southpaw stance. And a lot of talented fighters will shift with their punches being fully aware that they've switched stances, which actually gives you an advantage for the follow-up punch. Uh, one of the best shifters in the business was Gennady Golovkin. You could roll and shift and cover the distance with both hands, and by the time he got to you, he had a power punch coming from an unexpected angle. Why he was so effective at cutting off the ring. Absolutely. One of the best boxers uh, of the 2000s, for sure. One of my favorites of all time. So th- this guy, though, Rodrigo, 
he was he got that effective punch that knocked down Elvis, mm-hmm. and he he was just looking for it all night with no regard for what might follow. Right. There was no game plan. There was no there was no strategy aside from throw your biggest punch as hard as you can and hope it lands. 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 And you can't hope your way to a victory, and that's why he lost. Right. And it seemed like, to your point about switching stances, he wasn't anticipating the weight transfer to the next foot. He wasn't stepping through. He was just throwing the punch and allowing the physical shoulder and arm momentum and weight to go over, careem over his body until yeah. he was rolling over, basically, doing Absolutely. somersaults in the yeah. ring. In the gym, we try to say, I try to get rid of the word uh, throw for a punch. You want to... You don't want to throw a punch. It's not a rock. It's not a mm. ball. You don't throw it. You drive it. You want it to be driven to the target mm. with accuracy and power, like a spear, not like a rock that you're just hoping lands on the guy's head. But you, you know. So he was throwing right. his right hand with no with no regard for what it was attached to. No retraction really of the punch Nothing. because it was too. Yeah, great point. Yeah, that fight was interesting. High drama because one guy's down, then the other guy's down, and then it went to a snooze fest for the last ten rounds. Yeah, with ex- the only exciting part being Rodrigo's, you know, falling over. Yeah. But I thought I was pretty underwhelmed there with Elvis, who in the past has shown some uh, highlight reel action, and he's got a great name for the business, and he's got Freddie Roach in his corner. Mm -hmm. But no adjustments were really made, and he never really stepped on the gas and and took over. It looked like he was really rocked by that, that right hand that knocked him down. Yeah, and uh, he was not looking to exchange very much. And to his credit, that worked, right? You got a other guy who's made the fight one dimensional. You just kind of. Keep it in that dimension as long as you're as long as you're winning. Yeah, well, we can get to that with Tio as far as one dimensional. Okay, well, we're gonna we're gonna exchange thoughts on that later. Yeah, I was gonna we'll be get there. controversy on the pod. But next up, uh, Nico Ali Walsh uh, gets his rematch. Uh, hey, did you know that's the grandson of Muhammad did Ali? Did you know that? Did you know the, that? Yeah, of course. <laughs> Can't, be- can't believe it they uh, definitely remind you they, yeah, constantly they, yeah they do they do well you know it's something and, to be proud of and, and he kind of uh he kind of addressed that at the end which i thought was interesting we'll get to that in a second but uh avengers is only loss um drops a call in the third round uh in the sixth round he looked like you in there dislocates his shoulder that was crazy. Did you realize? Did you have phantom pain while you were? Oh, I instantly recognized what was happening. I could see from the shape of his arm. Yeah. You could see the sharpness of the bone protruding where the shoulders usually rounded. Mm-hmm. Then, you know, the arm was definitely de- definitely dislocated. And it looked like he didn't know. Because that's not how you put it back in, okay? You don't punch it back in. <laughs> so for those, for, for those who might not have caught the fight, he, he was kind of clowning, doing a bit of showboating throughout the fight, mm-hmm. um, as, as he's known to do. Uh and in the sixth round, yeah, his shoulder, it looks weird. There's a protrusion, but he starts kind of jumping up and down and waving waving it. And you're like, oh, he's kind of clowning on the guy. And then you realize, oh, no, he's trying to, like, with as he lands, pressure the shoulder. Because then later, he actually starts hitting yeah. his own arm. Well, he looked like Matthew McConaughey in uh, Wolf of Wall Street, right. pounding on his <laughs> yeah. chest. Like, he's trying to rev himself up or make exactly. some kind of statement. Which is why I think Akali didn't notice I think because Akali was doing his own version of showboating where he was walking forward and yelling and screaming and pounding his chest like a wild man. And so uh, if he would have had a little bit more savvy, he might have said, oh, I got a hurt guy in front of me. I did not understand that because it was in the fourth and fifth round where he was putting it on him, right? He was putting a lot of pressure, landing some decent shots. I think he probably won a few of those rounds on the scorecards. Yeah, he was scoring with the right hand over the top consistently. And then in the sixth round, you've got a defenseless fighter, one arm fighter with no ability uh, on that side. They should be very vulnerable to the rear hand, which is what he was landing. And he just took his foot off the gas entirely. Mm -hmm. And I I don't know if it's because he was gassed. At, At a certain point in the round, I actually thought, oh, maybe he noticed and he's taking like sympathy on him but i don't think that's what it was no that guy i don't know where where exactly who he's fighting for or where he's from don't know a lot about him but i was he definitely had a chance to win that fight again Mm -hmm. you know and he kind of blew it so that's got to be frustrating for him he thought he won the fight afterwards he was like protesting and walking around all angry i'm like oh you clearly lost that fight yeah And, and now the story really is uh Ollie Walsh, you know, overcomes his shoulder subluxation or dislocation. But, you know, personally, coming from, a, you know, a bum shoulder and having dozens of dislocations in the ring and out of the ring um, and eventually having to get a full labrum repair with eight anchors and all this shit I just went through last year. Um, this year, I guess. Mm-hmm. No, it was last year. Yeah, It's been a while, about eight months since the surgery. I'm like, I'm actually worried about Ollie Walsh's future. Because it might happen again. Well, that's how this thing works. You know, it could have had a small tear. 
But if he doesn't get that addressed right away and get some kind of surgical intervention, then that small tear, if, it, if he doesn't take the proper time to let it heal and he gets right back in the gym, he's going to keep tearing it until it's a, a real problem. And that's his lead hand. That's his jab. You yeah. know? And he, without, without a shoulder, you can't box. So hopefully he can get it fixed. They did say they, they reset it in the arena and shipped him off to the hospital right away. So mm-hmm. hopefully put him in the MRI, check for tears. But it sucks to see a shoulder injury. You know, George Groves fought through a shoulder injury one time, and much more gruesome looking. His arm was like halfway dangling dangling off his body like like it was chopped off and there's been a few guys that have a shoulder pop out and pop back in but pretty commendable for him you know he showed his heart and uh and won the fight but hopefully they get that shoulder patched up properly in that round he looked like you in there clowning on me switching stances so it looks like you got a jab and then a <laughs> rear hand and it was just crazy <laughs> one-handed bandit man you got to keep him distracted one thing i wanted to ask you about in this fight is akali had these mickey mouse hand gloves man his, did you see how big his gloves were? Dude, we, we were texting about that, and then when I was reading some comments on Top Rank's posts, other people were saying, what's up with the gloves? What's up with the gloves? Yeah. And other people said, man, I thought I was the only one that noticed. So it wasn't just us. And we watch boxing all the time. We see different bodies look a little different. That guy definitely was built kind of funny. You know, huge shoulders, short and stocky. Sure, but but his hands were, I mean, there's no way his hands are that big. Those are like 22-ounce gloves. Well, you know, the size of the hand doesn't really matter because the gloves are supposed to be uh you know a set size and different brands look different different you know what did that you catch, different did, did you catch what brand of gloves look like maybe they I were cletos tell. yeah i don't think they were they cletos. cletos no but th- they were clearly wearing two different ounces of gloves in there and that's just i don't understand that at all i mean the only thing i can say is it's it was could have been a different brand of glove because a, a softer glove will have more of a poof to it mm-hmm. the harder glove will be obviously more streamlined looking right some of these they don't really make horsehair gloves anymore they're hybrid but the puncher's glove the famous puncher's glove right is, that you can move the padding down right. and get your then it looked out. like a lot of the padding was on the back of the hand hmm. and that could have just been the, the way the glove was designed we could go back and look at the brand and, and see but it could be that that those were bigger gloves i've seen backstage shenanigans in other countries in america it's usually pretty strict though and they usually stick to the rules so i don't I don't see something outside of a contractual. That's what thing. I was wondering: is is, is the contractual thing where Top Rank is like, "Hey, listen, you know, he's gonna wear eights, you're gonna wear sixteens." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but how could they do that without letting it get out? Because uh, as soon as the guy lost, he would just grab the microphone and be like, "They made me wear different." It gloves. was those soft ass gloves. Yeah, they cheated me, and I was like, "So I don't think so." I just think it was a weird, weird looking pair of gloves. Yeah. All right. We're going to do more research. All Listeners right. out there, do do some deep dives and send us some screenshots and let's get to the bottom of this. Yeah, Glovegate. Yeah. This is, yeah, Glovegate. This is like a murder mystery podcast now. <laughs> um, well, at the end of the fight, uh, to your point about legacy, kind of calls out people basically saying that he's almost a celebrity boxer just by way of who he's related to. And he says, hey, man, I'm in this for the right reasons. I turned down millions of dollars to fight Jake Paul to fight, you know, this dude, to fight a random boxer on the undercard because I actually care about being a boxer. And I thought that was uh, interesting. And, of course, he had to call out Tio, who was running his mouth. Um, no surprise there. Yeah. Well, hey, that good for him for calling it like it is. And he's saying, I'm trying to do the right thing. But his his skills are right where they're supposed to be. Like, he barely, I mean, I don't know about barely, but that was a close fight. Mm-hmm. He didn't dominate that dude. And, you know, he hasn't dominated all his opponents either, you know. In, the, in his short career. So we'll see how they move him along, but I don't see this guy being a top world beater. Probably not, but I think he's saying he wants to walk that path and see where he can get on his merit, right? Test his skill. Yeah, and that's commendable for sure. It's commendable, but if I were him, I would absolutely take a couple million dollars to fight Jake Paul. Well, maybe the fact is he doesn't need a couple million dollars from Jake Paul because his family's got the Ali name and they got a good legacy and his dad invested in some shit, or his granddad invested in some shit. And yeah. So he doesn't need that money the way some other people might. Yeah, but it'd be fun fun I think you know so. jake paul is a cruiserweight true nico ali washes was his middleweight yeah so it's it's very very jake paul of him to, to, like, to try to find something who has name value that's smaller or older well, than you, me you just put jake paul in the mickey mouse gloves see <laughs> the, this is what they're that's why they were trying it out yeah. in this fight i'm telling you uh conspiracy fixes in well uh next up great fight fight that definitely stole uh stole the show on the card robisi ramirez Lands probably the greatest uppercut of all time. Uh, dude, what a shot. KOs uh, Brandon Benitez. Absolutely out. Not getting up. No point running through the count. Uh, brilliant. Get I think kind of puts his entire career back on track. Yeah. Um, 
Ramirez really threw the greatest uppercut of all time. Yeah. That, you know, of modern recorded history. That's just, that's a contender for knockout of the year. Mm-hmm. What a shot. Now, his opponent was tough. I thought, man, this guy likes getting hit because yeah. he was just getting hit with everything and just leaning right back into the storm. Very tough Mexican style. Uh, and it eventually didn't pay off for him because, you know, you can hit him straight in the nose all night long. But if you crank his neck back like a Pez dispenser, then down he goes. That's it. He was leaning over that front foot coming forward all night because he was finding the uppercut before that. It was clearly the punch that was going to get him out of there. And the dude just didn't make the adjustment. And then he's back on the ropes and... That was that. All she wrote. <laughs> Amazing. Great shot. Great comeback fight for real BC, and it sets up the rematch for uh, the, you know the guy who just fought what a week ago, mm-hmm. two weeks ago, and got himself a knockout. So here comes the rematch later this year. Yeah, yeah. Tall. The, the dude. Is, yeah, yeah. That's. I mean, that's that's what we want to see. Do you think that's next for real BC, or do you think he needs another fight in between to keep uh, the momentum going? I think going? that's 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 what's next. That's what they'll set up. Yeah. Real BC, he beat Shakur right in the. Olympics to take gold, I believe. Well, Shakur's good. We got to talk about him later. Yeah, true. Uh, well, next up, uh, top of the card, the showman returns. Great ring walk. Don't uh, like you're gonna hate on To for like ten minutes straight right now, but just give me the ring walk. Dude comes out to Michael Jackson, looking like a creep. His weird dance moves yes. in a silver suit. It was cool. It was very not cool. Okay, listeners, this man. If you see what he's wearing right now, you would understand his opinion of this ring walk is irrelevant. Hey, dude, I am a fashion icon, all right? Okay, we got cut-off camos <laughs> with sweatpants underneath. Right. We sure. got, what's this shirt? It's just an American, uh, okay, American flag, cut-off muscle tee. It's not happening in the studio, all right? Yeah, I would. I could do a better ring walk <laughs> in this fit right now. All right, that's our. That's going to be our first YouTube content. Is a ring walk off? Oh, that'd be a lot of fun. That'd be fire. Uh, but, all these people that don't actually want to fight, but they want to do ring walks. That'd be fun. I, I'm just in here. I'm not gonna know I made it as a rapper until some boxer lets me do come out with them, right? Yeah. I just want to rap to the ring walk. That's it. That's okay. my only reason for this podcast. My only reason for anything. You hear that, fighters? We got a guy ready to do the walk with you. And it's a short list of people I'll expect. Oh, I'll accept. It's right. like right, I'll do Shakur. Mm-hmm. I'll do Tank. Mm. I'll do Han. Mm-hmm. Those are my three. <laughs> <laughs> you got to come down to Vegas, man. So, all right. So, Teal. Terrible walkout. Corny as hell. Amazing walkout. Okay. It almost, it wasn't nearly as corny as his last one because it wasn't as flamboyant. It was like a, you know, a toned down version of the same corny shit. Mm. And then, you know, I got a lot of respect for him as an athlete. And, it, and he's got so much potential as a boxer to unleash his athletic ability and just be so explosive and, and you know. But I called this fight wrong. I thought the guy was going to do something that he wasn't able to do. He wasn't able to land any powerful blows. All right, I'm going to disagree with you here. So, so uh, recap of the fight. Um, Tio takes on Canada's uh, Steve Claggett. I've been saying Claggett. I think it's Claggett. We're going to show, show the man his respect, after, especially after that performance. Uh, kind of a cherry-picked opponent, or I'll say a cherry-picked opponent, right, who's going to sure. come forward, and that's exactly what he does. He puts it on him. He's like Velcro, glued to Tio all night. Um, Tio gets a unanimous decision. The question now is, you know, and, and Tio won decisively, uh, but it's did he win by enough is kind of the conversation to say. Did he impress the way that he should have given it's a cherry-picked opponent and he's trying to show that he's, you know, kind of still got it uh, given the up-and-down nature of his performances over his career and the fact that he's relatively new in this weight class. Uh, it sounds like you feel like he didn't show you enough. I'm going to take the opposite and say this guy loses one round on three scorecards. He outlands power punches 282 to 60. He rocked him pretty hard in the eighth. I think it's more a testament to the fact that Claggett is just crazy tough. Dude is indestructible. No doubt about that. So give him his credit there and give Tio credit for having tremendous conditioning, changing his game plan, like throwing. I mean, he, he threw an incredible number of punches. That's Claggett's thing. He out, not only did he outland him, he outthrew him. No, I don't think he outthrew him. He outthrew him. I don't know. Threw- Check the stats on that. I know he outthrew himself. That's the most that Tio's <laughs> ever thrown yeah. in a fight. But I, I think Steve uh, punched him. I'll, I'll pull it up. Let's check, check it, it out. out. Check the stats but, he, but either way, I think that's an, uh, like what it, basically you're saying unless he knocked him out, it was a loss. No, no. I, I don't expect a knockout for a dominant performance. Where was the footwork? Where was the jab? Where was the ring generalship? He, would, he walked backwards to the ropes. Let the guy punch him for a while. Try to get a counter punch and, and and slide out. 
rinse, repeat for until only one moment in the fight did he actually turn Claggett's back to the ropes and unload on him a little bit. One moment there in the eighth round when he did hurt him and unload on him. But I'm talking a good boxing match and a good boxer has the ability to change momentum, to do things over the course of a 12-round fight. I don't want to watch the same round over and over again and watch the guy not make any adjustments. It, was, it wasn't dynamic enough of a performance when he has the ability. That's why I'm disappointed in him. I believe he has the ability to do better, to do more, to show more footwork, more angles, and more ring generalship. He looked like, in the early rounds, he had a smile on his face, he was walking backwards, inviting Claggett onto him, and sometimes stepping in without a punch and just putting his own shoulder right on Claggett's guard to say, hey, let's." it almost looked like a sparring session kind of vibe. It looked like he was going to play with his food before he ate. So, and and I, th- I thought, okay, he's going to do something different eventually. He's going to say, okay, now look at the way I can punch. Now look at the way I can stunt on you because you're basic and I'm not. But he never showed me that. He, he showed the same thing he showed us in the fight with Jermaine Ortiz. He has an inability to adjust to during a fight to make something different happen. Okay, so I don't disagree with you that it would have been great to see him find a way to solve the puzzle that Steve was giving him, right? Same with Jermaine Ortiz. It's complete opposite fighters, right? Jermaine Ortiz, he chases the guy around all night, landing very few shots, can't cut the ring off, and doesn't look effective. In this fight, he's got the guy glued to him all night, doesn't find a way to get away from him and create separation and land big shots, right? But in both cases, you have an extreme an opponent with a style that's on an extreme end, right? So I don't know if Claggett really gave him the opportunity to do that. A good I'm, fighter creates their own opportunities. They I, don't wait for opportunities. Like, you're you're definitely right that you want to see that. But I mean, when you watch the fight play out, dude is again like Velcro. Uh, I thought he was so good in his in his way. The jab from the high guard. That's why I said, and this is a crazy comparison, but he had a little. Shades of Baturbiev yeah, yeah. in there because he would be in this kind of uh, rigid high guard type thing, and then this jab would explode, yeah. shocking jab, and he out with a step, and yeah. and Teal was trying to shoulder roll it, but he would still get it through. I said that's a that's a Canadian jab because you know our guy Baturbiev, he's trained yep. in Canada. It's mm-hmm. a Canadian move, and it's it's a great shot. It's a great jab. The jab it was probably his most effective punch throughout the night. And you're spot on. So here I got the punch stats. So Lopez uh, did out throw him. Uh, okay. 900 oh, and four, 946 all the time nine about the ring walk 946 <laughs> to 820 but to that's your, a lot of punches that's a lot of punches a crazy amount of punches that's what i'm saying it's impressive performance how many but of them were little he was doing these little weenie backhand punches he was cracking him but yeah, right. to your point on the jabs could get 80 throws 80 to lopez's 33 lopez yeah. completely abandoned the jab and i think that's the strongest point to your case that what he needed to do was get the jab working to create the separation maybe get some respect with it with the power jab to get him on the end of those punches so he wasn't smothering himself and that's where his power really is to maybe get the guy out of there yeah uh, and he yeah. couldn't figure that out but at the end of the day again dude loses one round on one scorecard against claget though he was supposed to dominate i mean i guess he did dominate he right. did dominate on, uh, but he did didn't do enough for me because because he's got potential to do more it's because you're a hater well, maybe That's a little why. bit maybe well the, i'm a little bit of a hater at the like, end he's of a the fucking fight, weird guy man at the end of the fight <laughs> i was a little disappointed because i didn't get any more information about aliens or pyramids but he did uh he did say uh he's going after legacy he's staying in the game you know after obviously retiring for whatever that was 12 hours and he wants to go up to 147 does he survive at 147? Well, he can't hurt guys at 140, so he ain't going to be hurting anybody. He, d- But I, I tell you what, he can win me back as a fan if he goes out there and shows his potential. It, it rises to his potential because he's got so much ability, and he can do well if he really does it. But he can't do this walking around the ring shit, walk backwards to the ropes, try to counterpunch and do these weird, like, kung fu hand blocks that don't lead anywhere mm-hmm. you know once he he's a great boxer with a lot of potential at 147 i don't see him knocking anybody out but i don't expect knockouts from everybody and that's okay but he could he could definitely box well there if he reaches his potential but and that's kind of been the the analysis of his career so far has been that he boxes to the level of his opponent right this in some ways was him 
be, being materially better than his opponent, right? Like he could have boxed it down and actually had a tough time and it could have been a split decision or something like that, which is kind of what you've seen in the past where he loses to Cambosis and that loss has aged even worse. I mean, mm-hmm. granted, what his heart was about to explode. Well, you, a lot of times, you know, he lost a fight because of an injury, but he won the titles off of an injured Loma. So, you know, that's the way the fucking world goes round. But he's the only person that convincingly beat Loma. Well, the guy who beat Loma was not the guy... That's what I'm saying about potential. Right, and which is what I mean. He Why, boxes, where was that guy last night? I think he might need an opponent of that caliber to bring it out of him. And and maybe that's, a, or maybe that's an excuse. Maybe because he's like a fucking two weight class is bigger than Lomachenko in reality. Mm-hmm. So he's finally growing into his weight class. And at 147, we'll see what he'll be able to do. Maybe he'll be even better because maybe it's the weight drain that's bringing him down. I don't o- know, Only man. he and his team know that. You know, if that's the case, then he then he needs to go up to 147 because it's obviously just too detrimental to your performance and your overall health to make a weight that you shouldn't be making. But from an outsider's perspective, that seems crazy to me to go up to 147, especially when you got a guy like that that you couldn't knock out all night. And it feels to me like the natural fight would be a unification with Pitbull Cruz, who has in some ways a similar come forward pressure style. Uh, will also be indestructible and tough to knock out. So keep this momentum going with how you dealt with that and and try to unify a 140 there. That would be the fight to make. I think that'd be super entertaining. And, you know, Pitbull's got a bigger punch than Claggett had. Uh, and, but he also leaves himself open a lot mm-hmm. more. Because one of the best ways to handle a counterpuncher like Lopez is just throw so many punches he can't fit anything in. Right. And that's what we saw from Claggett. So, uh, you, you know, this guy Cruz, he'll come shifting into range missing big overhand shots and staying down with his head down so he's really open to uppercuts he doesn't have that effective high guard that we see from Claggett whose defense was actually surprisingly effective he didn't hardly have a mark on him yeah um yeah I agree with you I think that Pitbull has a similar style with the come forward aggression but his volume is so much less right that Teal will look actually a lot better um and that seems like the clear fight to me that's that's our advice professional advice Send you a bill. And I'm sorry for saying mean things about you, Mr. Lopez. But you got to step it up, kid. Come on. Show us what you got. All right. Yeah, so he needs to shut out. The the one loss on one scorecard, unacceptable to you. Coach has got high standards over here. I do. Yeah. Uh, Let's shift over to DAZN. Two big fights. Uh, Sonny Edwards. Did you watch this fight? Sonny Edwards, Matadors, uh, Adrian Sorrell around the ring. Uh, until he the clash of heads, he gets cut deep, deep, deep cut on his head. Um, he wants to keep going, but the corner asks the doctor for the stoppage, and he wins a unanimous decision. Yeah, that was a smart move there. That cut. Uh, <laughs> what we saw happen with the Australian kid, you know, recently uh, with his head blown open by mm. the tall boy, and he, you know, ruined the fight for him. Yeah. So if they would have tried to continue, it might have gotten not gone his way. And they caught it at the right time. A hell of a cut, though, man. Blew his forehead wide open. That's going to take a while to heal. So he's out for the rest of the year. Yeah. Yeah, it looked bad. I hope it does heal up and it doesn't become like a recurring problem in his career. He looked nice, though. His footwork is, is smooth. The way he changes directions and slips and slides and fights off the back foot, beautiful footwork. I mean, Sonny's amazing. I, you know, I had him, you know, not a favorite against when he fought Bam, but I thought people were really underestimating him. Uh, which, you know, he changed his style up in that fight, tried to take it to him a little bit much, too much, and, and got caught uh, fighting the other fighter's fight. But he, he's an incredible fighter. And the most interesting thing about this fight, I thought, was the crowd in Arizona just hating him, just <laughs> booing him the whole time. I mean, he gets the mic, and he's, like, apologizing to them, and they're just raining down boos. Because, you know, from their perspective, boxing is fighting. Right. And anything other than that, if anything other than a brawl is like, what are you doing? You're running. Did you see on the undercard this guy, the local kid who fought uh, what his name was? Oh, the same as that name as a kid from Philly. Um, you know, you know, what I'm saying Garcia mm. uh, is a Garcia, a local kid. Garcia, he fought a uh, he fought a kid named Card- Cardenas, familiar mm. name. OK. And there is a local guy. And his own crowd turned against him because he was being way too defensive mm. and he was losing the exchanges. And by the end of the rounds, he was pulling a, a track a lap around the track. Was he really running though? Or oh. was he boxing clean and no, defensively? No, he was losing the exchanges. And uh-huh. so by the end he was literally disengaging and not turning his back to run, but doing everything he could to stay away. And his own crowd was booing him. That's rough. That's rough. That's I mean, a rough crowd, but Hey, that crowd was alive, man. You turn the volume on, on the Tiafimo Lopez, 
you could hear like one kid in the crowd yelling like, come on, you can do it. You know, like in the, you could have yeah. heard a pin drop besides, uh, you know. <laughs> hey, there were some Puerto Ricans there, man. It was. Well, for Ramirez kind of stole the show, right? True. Ruby yeah. Cios, his crowd is, you know, he's Cuban or Cuban. Cuban yeah, 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 yeah. Cubans. And they're in Miami. So it's right down. Yeah, it's right, a little Havana. You know, it's just a little boat right away. Yeah. Uh, so it's no big surprise there. Why isn't Lopez fighting in Brooklyn? You know, that's where he's from. True. Well, now he's from Spain. He changed oh. his flag. Did you see that? Really? Yeah, Top Rank was like, well, his grandfather was from Spain, so he asked us before the broadcast to change his, like, fighting color flag on the little thing in the corner to Spain. I'm like, oh, for sure. I noticed that they were flying the Mexican flag for somebody who was a me- a, an American, a Mexican-American. I think like, you are we kind of get to decide. Yeah, I think you go heritage. Uh, okay. I mean, uh, you could do whatever you want, I think, right? Sure, just, okay. I, I think... You know, should they govern it and just say, like, listen, it's citizenship, whatever you're pa- you got to have a passport? Or yeah, I think that would make sense. I think Tio should just do like outer space, just be like an international or like intergalactic, yes, fighter. Yeah, that'd yeah. be so cool. Uh, one thing I thought was hilarious on the broadcast is I think it was Chris Mannix is like, hey, I was outside walking around the hotel last night and I stumbled onto Sonny uh, outside smoking a cigarette. <laughs> And he was like, what are you doing, dude? And he was like, apparently started lauding the health properties of cigarettes and how they're so good for your cardiovascular health and open up your capillaries. And he's like, I had to just walk away. I couldn't listen to it anymore. Dude, he gives like crackhead vibes. When, yeah. When he walked into the arena and they're like, oh, here comes Sonny Edwards. He's coming in with no shirt on, looking like he's some <laughs> fucking Arizona Glendale crackhead. Yeah, he just looks like out he belongs a- right there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's like yeah. out back of the 7-Eleven. Yeah, I can try it. He's like smoking a cigarette and shit. Like, what a weirdo. I mean, he's got the craziest overbite. Yeah. I don't know how he eats food. It yeah, doesn't look to, like... He might have to tea. drink food. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, well, he smokes it, apparently. <laughs> uh, well, uh, speaking... Hey. He gets the win, even after the cut, so that's that's the way it goes. He's a phenomenal boxer, but he's no Bam. Speaking of crackheads, Bam comes out, with uh, unveils some new face tats. I, I don't know how I feel about this, man. I yeah, thought, I I thought mean, he was the clean-cut Americana, he, you know? No, dude, he's embracing some heritage there, I suppose, with the feather, but it looks cool. But uh, hopefully he can grow a beard someday if he doesn't want to <laughs> fucking show that for the rest of his life. You Some know? sideburns is what I he mean, needs. I guess That's he's where just he banking got on it, getting covered up. Well, Bam Rodriguez comes out, takes another head from another legend uh, for his wall. Uh, the first ever to drop and stop uh, Juan Estrada. Unbelievable fight. The best of all the fights that night on either card. Oh, yeah. Incredible performance. Also in the fight. It, it, it looks dominant from Bam at the beginning, but then Bam ends up getting a flash knockdown, gets dropped for the first time in his career. So some back and forth action. Uh, incredible fight. What did you think? Wow. The most entertaining fight in the last whatever, you know, certainly of the night. So entertaining, so much energy, so much on the line. And Estrada came to fight. And even before, you know, he got the knockdown on Bam a little uh, midway, midway through there, he landed some really clean shots in the first and second round to get the kid's respect. Mm-hmm. But as soon as that kid gets his feet moving, you're in trouble. And once he gets that rhythm going with his step and slide and shift, and it's, you know, the, Estrada just couldn't keep up with the ring position. And he, he knew he made a mistake, and it, it, caught, it caught up to him. He got rocked a few times, and then eventually with the body punch. But I thought it was a great fight. They're going to run it back. It's already set. So. Yep. Estrada, right after the fight, says he wants to exercise the rematch clause. Do you think he can be competitive? It'll be competitive in the next fight, or is it going to be the same result? I think it will be similar. Um, that body punch was sneaky because he was attacking the head from that angle a lot, and then he just put it down to the gut. It's too bad they didn't really catch a good angle of it on the camera. No. We might see a ringside like cell phone camera angle come out eventually this week. But I was so frustrated. I was like, oh, it's okay. That I can't really even see the shot land. I want to see that thing. Obviously, you can see him. He whirled around. He dipped his hip and unloaded that left right into the gut. Yeah, Bam just has the scoot and shoot yeah. down so perfectly where, like, if you're, if you're picturing it, you lean your hips in one direction and then unravel them in the other direction so that you're actually, like, moving your hip placement off the center line to a new location very quickly. While loading a punch. And what it does is it creates torque and rotation it, uh, in your upper body over your leg position so that you can whirl an amazing punch. So not only are you taking a new angle that your opponent is not prepared to defend, but you're loaded to throw your most powerful punch from that new angle where your opponent's the most vulnerable. Yeah, and, and driving that punch out from your legs and your and your the whirl of the torso and certainly the that was a, one of the greatest punches. Now the kid is the king of one fifteen. I mean I don't see the I don't know if he'll knock Estrada out. That's where we got the prediction wrong too. 
We didn't see Estrada well, going we'll, down. We'll get on to our apologies for our picks. <laughs> this is the worst week of our picks. Yeah, I know. Our streak is over. But I thought Estrada made a good account of himself, but it was an eventuality that he wasn't going to be able to stick around in there for too long. Yeah. I think, you know, at a certain point, the the age and youthfulness of Bam does just become the deciding factor in the fight. Like, at the point that it's a firefight and they're both just seeing who can land, it just seems like the younger, fresher guy with he just looked like he had more vigor and energy in there and the, he was going to be outgunned Estrada was going to be outgunned yeah he was saved by the bell a couple times there you know yeah where that was like whoa and the, you know this guy's getting his ass kicked and then the bell would ring and when he caught bam with a clean one two it just knocked him off balance more than anything he got up smiling got up ready to fight i don't think he was dazed or rocked really at all mm-hmm. which is another useful thing so yeah great fight great show and, and this kid man what a what a champion definitely the king of the smallest weight classes i don't know anybody else that i can say is, can well that leads right like into that. the question that everybody wants to ask and they did ask him is will he ever end up close enough in weight to fight in a way <laughs> i mean we're talking 122 115 right now that's really not that far away they meet at 118 <sighs> i mean i think he could eventually get there mm-hmm. but not right away he's only what 20 one twenty four. He's so. I think he's twenty four. So young yeah. for what he's accomplished. Where he's probably the most accomplished youngest. Yeah, boxer. Uh, no doubt. Sorry, Rungvisai, Quadris, and now Estrada. Now, yeah. who's who's next for him? You know, I don't know. I, I mean, obviously Estrada's next. But well, right after that, are there any more legends for him to take out? Chocolatito. Oh yeah, yeah. He's got to fight Chocolatito, and then, and then maybe how old is Inouye right now? I think he's in his late twenties. Oh, is he that young? I thought he was... 28. I think, I don't know. We can double check that. Let's look at him. That's boxing fact check podcast. How old is Inoya in a way? 31. Wow, he's older than I thought. Yeah, so you give him a couple years, maybe Bam fights him close on his way out. Yeah, that, I mean, he'll have an incredible career. Bam, uh, don't get any more face tats, but you're a fan, fa- <laughs> you're, you're a show favorite. Man, a, an Arizona favorite. The crowd was going wild, going crazy. I, I love mean, that's it. that's what you want to see in a boxing match: excitement, drama, back and forth. Yeah, the two sided showdown. And and when Teofimo got on the mic and said, "We gave the fights to the fans, the fight they want to see," and I was like, "Nobody wants to see that." You're like, "No, that no. was on another channel." Tune in to the other channel and see what a boxing match is supposed to look like. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. You know, that's an effort. That's reaching your potential. Well, Bam is reaching his potential right here against legends. I'll tell you who did not reach their potential. That was us with our picks. So apologies. Uh, to, to date, on every show combined, we've only missed two picks, uh, but we missed three picks on this one night. We, if we flipped them around, we would have done a lot better. If we would Because <laughs> I took Bam uh, by points. I did not think he'd be able to get him out of there, just given the fact that Estrada had never touched the canvas, never been stopped. Um, I did think Bam would have a dominant performance, but I thought it would be on the cards. Uh, and I thought that T.O. would eventually find the stoppage uh, in the fight. but yeah, Those were fair fair calls. Fair calls, uh, but it would have been better to, to switch them. So we got the winners right, but it was uh, the method of victory uh, was, was definitely off there. And then, of course, the top-ranked special doesn't always come through. If you bet the two top-ranked fighters to win money line, it's pretty much a lock. But if you try to go- dabble with the method of victory, Robisi got him out of there, so we got half the parlay done, but then T.O., um, maybe I'll mail him a bill for the hundred dollars that I hey, lost. Hey, I'm telling you, nobody's nobody's ever going to bet on that guy knocking anybody ever uh, out ever again, especially if he moves up in weight class. True. Yeah, I think he's got to step down the level of opposition even more than he did in order to get somebody out of there. Yeah, it's bad news. Well, great night of boxing, great action, uh, real fun. Great to come back to town after a long trip away and get right back into the action and see some good fights. And, you know, back in the gym today and always training, always learning and looking forward to this weekend. We got some big fights coming up again. Yeah. Well, should we run through some boxing news real quick and then let's get into yeah, picks yeah, and predictions yeah. for Hit next week? With the news. All right. So a couple things. Uh, Devin Haney officially becomes the WBC champion in recess at 140. This guy's on social media flirting with retirement and taking two years off and I'm waiting out Ryan Garcia's one year suspension, all these things. Uh, but they elevate uh, Albert Pueo, who we just saw a couple weeks ago beat Gary Russell to full champion. So he gets the email belt, uh, and they order the title defense against Sandor Martin. Uh, I, I don't know what's up with what, what's next for Haney. He says that he's going to sue Ryan Garcia. Not really sure why uh, or what the uh, what the grounds would be. Ryan Garcia, who's suspended now a year, says he's uh, moving up to 147. Maybe he and Tio can fight at that weight. 
Yeah, people would tune in for that. Yeah. Uh, do you think the rematch between them is inevitable, or do you think they go their separate ways? I think they move on. I think Haney wants the, everybody to forget that ever happened, that they were ever in the same room together. He tried to get his own to delete the fight replay from their from their yeah I know. from their uh, library. Um, and like he's just like please forget. And he's like maybe if I leave for a year, everybody will forget. Somebody needs to make a meme of Bill Haney with the little Men in ba- Black flasher thing. <laughs> just, it didn't happen. Zoom, zoom. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in other news, Benavidez has gotten a two weeks, uh, two week extension to decide if he's going to be ranked at one seventy five or one sixty eight. What do you think? Which path should he go? Oh wow! Uh, I'd say one seventy five. Yeah, just stick with it? Yeah, I think you should stick with that. He got a great performance against a former champion. So you stick around there, and you could win some belts and make some things happen. I don't think there's a whole lot for him at 168 other than the Canelo. And the, the Canelo. The Canelo. And, and I don't think he's going to get the Canelo. Ever? Nah, man. He's been the mandatory for Canelo for eight months. Has anybody even... Canelo's been off the news for a while. Nobody's yeah. talking about Well, because the to. UFC pushed him out of his September date that he usually they fights stole, at. They stole the, the sphere. Yeah. Crazy. I, I think he should go head to head with them. I, I mean, I, I haven't looked at the UFC viewing numbers, but I Dude, feel when like he can... fought Kovalev and they waited. Did they? They waited. They're, you go back and watch it. There's, they're in the locker rooms. He's taking a little cat nap on the couch while they're waiting. Oh, to finish and, up the UFC. Fight. And they actually broadcast UFC in the stadium to keep the crowd from getting restless. <laughs> they, somehow, imagine what they had to pay for that. What UFC fight was on? <laughs> Who fucking knows? Is that man? when Conor McGregor was fighting? It might have There's been one no of those. UFC fighters now that are. I don't. I don't know that the audiences are that much crossover. I, I think it's a weird decision. I would tell Benavides to go to 168 and keep the pressure on Canelo, but that's just because I think at 175, the only two known commodities that he can fight are both going to crush him, which is Bivol and mm. ben, or and uh, Baturbiev. I can't see him winning either of those fights. No, but he's the young guy in the division. Those are the old guys. Yep. So give him a couple of years of working against some less notable competition, and then they'll age out, and he'll be the guy. So it's like, do you want to be a big fish in the small pond at 168? or Literal big fish. Yeah, that's where I'd rather be. Uh, best news for last, uh, Usyk vacates the IBF belt rather than facing his mandatory. Dubois gets the email belt, becomes the IBF champion. Next in line to fight him is Anthony Joshua. Sets up a huge fight in Wembley. Uh, I wow. believe in September. Wow. I think we thought we thought this might be a thing, but I yeah. didn't know that the belt would be on the line. In- incredible fight. Not only that, in a weird way, my protective energy of Usyk, he stays undisputed. Even if he loses to Fury, Fury does not become, become undisputed. undisputed. He's, yeah. Fury now has to beat him, Usyk, and then either Dubois or uh, Joshua. So you, did you see their face-off when they got a little heated? It, yeah, it wasn't the face-off. It was because I, I was I was like... I saw the headline, I was Googling it, I was trying to find it, and they were so respectful in the face-off, and then it's this, like, behind-the-scenes... Yeah, that's right, the table talk. And they're like, we can go right now. Okay, and they Don't both you ever disrespect up. me. And he's like, damn, bro, they're ready to go. I love that energy from the two otherwise very respectful, polite Brits. Yeah, well, apparently don't tell Joshua we can go now. Because I didn't think it was that disrespectful. And all the yeah. things we see and hear in boxing, he was just like, yeah, we'll fight now. I'm not. He's basically trying to say, I'm not afraid of you. Yeah. And he's like, oh, now you're disrespecting me? Yeah. It's like, what? you don't have to fucking be afraid of the guy. You know, he just wants people to be afraid of him all the time. And hey, I wouldn't want to fight the dude, but I'm not a heavyweight boxer. I wouldn't be afraid of him if I was Daniel Dubois. I'm gonna knock you out too. You know, yeah. these guys should be allowed to talk a little shit. So he seemed a little bit of a diva in that exchange to me. Oh, for sure. But maybe that I think that's almost the energy he's trying to put out there now because this is a dude that people have said is a broken man and lost his confidence ever since Ruiz dropped him. And same with Dubois. They've said like, ah, oh, you don't really have it. You quit with Usyk, and you know, both of them kind of have this questioning whether they believe they can really do it so i think they're they must be sitting there feeling like amped up like they got something to prove well long-term prediction for that aj aj yeah you know i think you're right dubois is plus 380 right now though and that seems a bit extreme i mean he he did he walked through those hergovic right hands yeah. really well but a hergovic right hand is not an aj right hand. no sir not at all yeah hey I, I mean you got to figure aj is every bit as powerful as dubois from a just a physical standpoint as yeah, tough lifting as big, weights and shit yeah, but yeah. he's a better boxer yeah, he's got his his one two his straight right hand is really nice yeah it's long it's straight and it's powerful and it's accurate and it's driven really well so i think he, he if he touches uh dubois with that thing he's gonna get some funny legs yeah i definitely uh favor aj in that fight but let's uh let's look ahead to to our double header this weekend let's do it 
Top rank first. Let's start with the top rank. Yeah, I like the old Bob show. Top rank on top. Uh, the headline, Shakur finally comes back. Uh, I guess I shouldn't say finally. He fought in November. Uh, but he's taken on Artem Haratunian, the uh, German fighter. The German fighter with a record of 12-1. and 12-1, and one, fought all his fights in Germany, except for the one time he ventured to Las Vegas. He lost a unanimous decision to Frank Martin uh, just about a year ago. Uh, what, do you, what do you think about this fight? Is Shakur dipping down to the bottom ranks of the barrel as much as Tio did? Is this the same kind of fight the top rank likes to set up? The, you know, it's not a total setup. It's not a total bum. This guy was a bronze medalist in the Olympics. So to, and and he's, you know, I'm sure he's been getting decent fights. We don't know these guys. He's on the other side of the world. But if he's had any good management, they haven't just been giving him soft touches. And usually these Olympic guys don't just get the soft touch. Mm-hmm. So he's probably had some decent work over there. Obviously, he couldn't handle the Frank show over in Vegas, but he didn't get he didn't get knocked out. You need yeah. him, yeah. so he's got potential. And, but really, this the whole story of this fight is going to be: what is Shakur Stevenson going to show us? Mm-hmm. Is he going to show us something that you know that he can do a little bit more than he did in his last fight? You know, he just put out an interview with Dan Raphael where he was like he was pretty adamant about like defending himself. He said, "You know what? Going back and looking at that fight, I'm I'm happy with my performance. I'm proud of my performance." And he's like. All these people, he's like, I'm disappointed in the public. He said, people say, fuck you, well, fuck you too, you know? And he's going off. I'm like, damn, kid. Oh, and he also said, well, they're not promoting my fight. I don't feel like they're promoting my fight. And Raphael calls him out and he says, well, they put me in touch with you for this interview. So (laughs) You're promoting it right now. You want to tell me why you feel they're not promoting it? And he's like, it's just different. It's just different. I want more. And I think that we heard something very similar from Tank Davis, where he didn't go to the press conference and saying... They're not promoting my fight, so I'm not going to go to the press conference. I'm like, what are you talking? That's how the promotion works. But I really, I have a theory about this. Hmm. They all want that Ryan Garcia attention, and they're not mm. getting it. And they're they're feeling like it's their promoter's job to bring that shining light on them, the TMZ energy. Yeah. But no, kid, you you don't want that energy. You know, you just stay in your lane. Well, a a Ryan Garcia is doing it himself. Yeah, B that's what I'm saying. you might not want it. You don't want C, that. C I'm gonna put the pressure all back on them collectively, which is you don't make the right fights. That if if this was Tank versus Loma versus Shakur, for if any of the top guys fighting each other, then we want to see it. Yeah, but I mean, I, even for, I got excited for Tank Frank Martin because that's a good fight, and I know Frank Martin is a skilled fighter, and and I th- I did think Tank was gonna do what he did but it's still a good fight but Shakur like you got to make the right fight that people want to see Shakur Pitbull uh dropping back down to 135 that's a great fight you know mm-hmm. there, there's a there's a list of them uh Shakur Loma would be an incredible fight but not this one you yeah know? no and you know I think a promoter any promoter would tell you despite this guy's record this German kid Haratunian he's hard to promote in America yeah nobody the, knows who you nobody are knows who he is and um his name is really hard to pronounce. Uh, you know, he's a complete stranger to people. And, it's, you know, if you want a, a big fight, you got to have a big name, a yeah. recognizable name. Yeah, so I put it back on them. They need to change kind of the culture. And that's, I'll always give Ryan Garcia's props there, which is he really is setting up these fights and fighting people. And that's part of the reason. I mean, that and being a complete mental patient is yeah. why he's got the fame. on the loose. Yeah. yeah, and have a nice hair. But that's my theory, though. Is these guys are salty because they want that, that level of, of fame and attention, but... They're yeah. not doing the work to get yeah. it. And I, like I told him, there's nothing wrong with this fight. A fight fan is going to watch this fight. The fight fan is going to at least maybe not know the guy, but do his research to find out about the guy. And this is Shakur's opportunity to get the real boxing fans back on his side. And then later, maybe he'll get a big showcase fight yeah. against somebody with a name. But right now, this is your chance to create something that you can build on. Because right now, he's kind of at square zero. You know, Well, he's, kind of, he's at square zero, and he's kind of at the end of this time with top rank because this is his last fight with top rank so he kind of needs to show something here to increase his stock in the market so that he can figure out what's what's next promotionally who he can who he can work with and how excited people are going to be to work with him because he needs to give them something to build off of so let's get in let's break down as you said let's break down the fight i think uh this is a really interesting opponent because where tio selected somebody that was clearly going to come forward and allow him to show his counter punching abilities he might have as we said uh been a little overconfident, picks someone coming forward too much. Mm-hmm. Sh- I don't, Shakur picks somebody who, as far as I can tell, mimics his style. Hartunian is kind of a mid range fighter, doesn't really like to work on the inside, uh, a, a bit crafty, uh, likes people on the end of his punches. 
tries to be defensive. He's a very clean, sound you know, Olympian boxer. Is that a weird choice for Shakur? What style would you pick for Shakur to look the best? Well, I think he likes to call himself a, a pocket fighter, a guy who stays right in the mid-range, right at the edge of it. Mm-hmm. So he can do his work and then slip out with just a little twitch of his shoulders and head position. And if this guy isn't going to be hyper-aggressive, that means he, you know he won't run out of space. If this guy's going to be in the pocket with him, mm-hmm. he's banking on having the better timing, the better defense, and the ability to really pinpoint him. Mm-hmm. I think that's what he's banking on here. Okay, so basically just beat him at his own game, essentially. Yeah, yeah, and I think he'll give him the fight that he's looking for and give give Shakur a chance to maybe even hurt the guy a little bit if, if he's going to stay in the pocket with him too long. I think it's interesting because Shakur's best fight in terms of his most dominant performance, I think, was Oscar Valdez. Yeah, but how much of that was Valdez like falling headfirst into punches? True, but that's that's kind of that pressure fighter thing, right? Come forward, Shakur steps back, stays long the whole time, makes him look like kind of foolish. I don't think he'll have the same opportunity here, but maybe he gets to show a different gear uh, because he can land some more effective punches with a guy who's kind of standing at the end of his range. Rather yes, than yes that's, that's what I'm looking forward to. A real sharpshooter showdown. Mm-hmm. Shakur's weakness, I find, is that he doesn't slip or roll punches. He only really pulls back. He's a master of range. Right, he doesn't. Yeah. He doesn't get low. He doesn't change levels a lot. He doesn't. You know, if you think about the head in boxing as like the shifter, as you always taught me in a in a car, right? Like shifting from first gear, second. You got all these positions. You can drop your head. You look at Canelo. He does it perfectly. Yeah, Shakur just goes from from uh, twelve to six. Yeah, <laughs> right. Pulls straight back. And a lot of his fights, he does end up moving back, 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 back. And but he like he he likes to stay in the pocket. He'll just move that pocket wherever he needs it to be. Mm-hmm. But that tends to be he sneaks it back, sneaks it back, sneaks it back, and tries to let the guy walk into something and then slides out the side before he gets caught to the ropes. So he's got so much ring IQ and so much ability. I think he should be able to get a, a dominant win here um, and set himself up for something bigger down the road. But, you know, it's it's Hartunian's fight to win. He, he's got to get in there and do something. And it, I think he might have some success as long as he doesn't force it. But I don't see him winning this fight. Yeah, I don't either. Do you do you see Shakur possibly getting the stoppage, or is it going to be a decision? I mean, I Shakur mean, by decision is kind of like, uh, is the sun going to rise tomorrow? But dude, after last week's abysmal predictions, um, and these guys with potential letting me down, Lopez, you know, I, you're looking at another kid with so much potential, but he's showing me repeatedly that he can't. He some you know whether his hand was injured or not, mm-hmm. I don't really care. It was a snoozer, right? He didn't, you know. He, and he did what he had to do to that night. But what if he gets injured again? Yeah. What What are you going to do? So I I, th- I think a, a decision win here for Stevenson Smart Money. Well, decision is minus 130, uh, which is actually pretty decent odds, I think. Uh, Shakur by stoppage, plus 105. Right. So yeah. You might, well, it's a top rank special. So let's talk about who else is on this card. Great card. I did not realize till the other day, kind of diving in, wow, they put together a great card so, kind of silently. Well, maybe the, maybe the kid is right and they're not promoting it because I just found out today from you when I got here that Abdullah Mason's on this card. Yeah. What the heck? I know. So, well, uh, almost, I guess, I'm going to say co headline on this fight. Oshaki Foster defends as uh, WBC super flyweight belt against the Olympic gold medalist uh, Robinson Kinsesau, wow. who Shakur also absolutely destroyed (laughs) great fight great Great fight fight. though this is the number two uh versus number five esp and rank super flyweights super fly okay yeah great great fight um foster won the title from ray vargas uh his first defense he was down on the scorecards actually but ko'd rocky hernandez uh and then he got a kind of lackluster split decision against nova knocked him down i think in the last round and Mm -hmm. that really uh sealed the deal interesting fact Kinsesau is 0-2-1 in title fights. So he has two losses in his entire career. Both are in title fights. Uh, and so one was to Valdez, who had okay. just popped for PEDs. Yes, yes. And then one was to Shakur, who also lost the belt because he lost it on the scales. Mm. Didn't, didn't make weight for that fight. So he lost he lost his his two losses were both in title fights, and the other guy didn't keep the belt. <laughs> And one was a draw, too? And then one was a draw with Navarrete. Damn. Well, that's a hard-working man with a lot of potential, too. So hopefully he gets in there and makes the action happen because Foster showed some vulnerabilities, you know? Yeah. He looks beatable. Yeah. But he's got that it's a great ability to shift the momentum, to fight back, to dig deep, and, and really 
you know, show that he's got the, the heart and the grit. He's a grit fighter, you know? Yeah. So we'll see a gritty fight here, I think. I think so, too. And he's he's younger. He's he's a lot short. He's like three inches shorter, but he has a two-inch reach advantage. It's gonna be That's going to be an interesting aspect of the fight. Uh, to me, this is, should be kind of a pick em fight, maybe. Is that how you see it? Like, yeah, definitely. It's hard to call. I mean, who... who it, are they both top ranked guys? I don't know. I mean, I think they typically we try to favor the title holder, and he's probably going to keep it, you know, mm -hmm. unless he blows it. Yeah. So you'd think Foster would be able to pull it out. So maybe a slight edge to Foster, but, but maybe this is Constance Al's time to say, hey, I'm tired of losing in these title fights. I want one for real. I want to put my name on it. Yeah. I think that's my flaw as a, as a, betting man is trying to get in the headspace of the pressure of the fighter like to me i want shakur by stoppage because i just feel like he must feel the pressure to put on such a dominant show and in this instance can say sal getting his fourth title shot this is it 35 36 hour old he has fourth title shot bro this you got to win this fight yeah this is his moment so uh, pressure for both of them and it should end up like i said a gritty fight a close fight i can't say man yeah, it's tough. Well, right now, Conceição's plus 175, and at the risk of keeping my cold streak going from last, from last <laughs> week, I kind of want to take Conceição just because the moment's big, and the, I think that's probably the wrong the wrong odds on him. Um, it's closer than that, for sure. Yeah. But, I, you know, I would go, I'll say, I'll contrast you, and I'll say, let's just stick with the title holder. I think you're probably right. side because it's the top rank special, you know. Yeah, so, <laughs> they're uh, cooking. So that, so we're gonna we got we're picking Shakur, we're picking uh, Oshaki Foster. Okay, who Go. else is on this card? Uh, Keyshawn Davis, one of my favorite boxers to watch, uh, versus Miguel Mondueno, uh, who's 31 and two, never been stopped. Uh, uh, interestingly, he lost a unanimous decision last to Steve Cleggett. Oh. Uh, I might have watched that fight in my film study last week. Probably did. Two weeks ago. Yeah. Um, Mexican fighter, seems like a game opponent. Obviously quite a bit of skill, uh, but there to get beat down by Keyshawn. Yeah, for sure. Keyshawn's got so much action. And when are they going to make the fight with Andy Cruz, man? Yeah. That's, that's the fight. Are they going to simmer time. that for forever? Uh, you think that's the fight that's like natural, that set it up? I mean, they got to get there eventually, but you know that's a that's a headliner, you know, and he's not headlining yet. He's third fight down the card. They got to yeah. build him up a little bit more and put. Well, as soon as he's in a position where they say, "Hey, kid, it's your turn to sell tickets," yeah, they say, "Well, we got a guy for you, Andy Cruz, and it's time to get that get that win." Is After Ke losing to him four times in the amateurs, yeah, is Keyshawn? Is he a one? He's one thirty five, right? Thirty five, yeah. I mean, when when do they make the fight with him and Shakur? <laughs> I mean, is that like making like brothers fight to the death? Uh, yeah, I don't know if that's going to happen. I just never do it. It's just interesting to me when you got two fighters on the same promotional company on the same card, both fighting other boxers that you'd rather see them fight each other. That's boxing. That's boxing. That's boxing. Uh, well, uh, great fight. Another great fight. Abdullah Mason the kid. versus the veteran borderline journeyman. I'm not sure where one pleads into the other. Uh, Louis LeBron. Again, somebody there to get blasted out of there. Yeah, dude. This Abdullah Mason show, he's going to land that left hand on him and probably smoke him out of there in the first couple rounds. Honestly, they should put that fight last as like the default headliner. Mm. Like you watch Shakur, maybe it'll be a good fight, maybe not. And then, oh, it's okay. We get this Abdullah Mason guy <laughs> looking incredible. Yeah. He's no. such such a great boxer to watch. So don't, don't miss any of that. Those four fights are going to be highly entertaining. Super solid. And you don't have to steal them because it's on ESPN just for coach. The way it should be. Yeah. Uh, let's absolutely in no way, shape, or form talk about the diaz uh boxing match. <laughs> <laughs> <Let's>, <laughs> <laughs> this is the most hilarious thing to be in the world. Two UFC fighters fighting in a different sport to get some money to finally get paid, I guess. There's money in boxing, and there's there's drama in that fight. They're both were notable UFC guys, for, you know, for being outspoken and crass and ridiculous and their yeah. antics. And and Diaz is a, a joker in the in the ring. He turns his back. He slaps people. He clowns and um, the indestructible vegan. Yeah, well, I mean, you got to respect his fighting abilities, but he got beat by Jake Paul in a boxing match. It's just like. To me, this is like Damian Lillard and LeBron James are going to race in downhill skiing. <laughs> it's like, uh, what? This is that Yeah. I think they're just trying to cash in on the the circus sideshow abilities that boxing has. Yeah. You know, this they're probably, you know, all in on the promotion. It's like, 
let's get together and make some money. Yeah. You know? I mean, good for them. Get to the check, but also no thank you. Also, yeah, it's a pay per view. It's like, I'm, are you out of your mind? I'm surprised you brought it up, dude. I I've seen a couple things about it because they had some drama at a press conference, but other than that, I really haven't heard any news. I about just want to go out of our way to say we're not mentioning it, right. To get some credibility thanks, in the yeah, box. Thanks for not talking about yeah. it. Yeah. Um, the zone card, William Zapata comes back to fight uh, Giovanni Cabrera. Uh, Zapata, I think, kind of needs a win to boost his stock in the crowded 135 division. Yeah, man. So much talent in that division. They got to yeah. clean things up. Mm -hmm. uh, Cabrera, interestingly, went the distance with Pitbull um, and got a win. Or oh, Zapata, right? It's coming off his win with uh, Maxi Hughes. Good Dude, stoppage. Cabrera got hit with everything in that fight, though. I remember thinking, man, this guy just loves punishment. He mm -hmm. was riding and rolling with a lot of the shots, but his hands were down. And he was getting smacked, and it was starting to wonder, can Pitbull Cruz actually punch? What's going right. on with this guy? Right. He's, he's hitting him, but he's not hurting him. Yeah, he he's tough. I don't think he's ever been stopped. Zapata has an 86% KO rate. What what gives? You think it's a Zapata decision? Not going to be able to get him out? Yeah, based on his, uh, his uh, chin strength mm -hmm. that he demonstrated in the Cruz fight, I don't think a KO is coming here, but Zapata's... I think a cleaner boxer, better boxer, sharper, cleaner, better. So, yeah, I and I, he'll, he'll take that one by decision. By decision. I think he's a money line's minus 2,000 favor. They haven't released the line on the method of victory, but I'd look for Zapata by decision. That seems like what's likely. Definitely. He, likely, definitely. Likely, definitely. I believe he still throws the most punches in boxing, right, William Zapata? Doesn't he throw like 100 punches around or something yeah, crazy he's a like real, that? He's a real puncher, man. He really lets his hands go. And, and that's what you know we want to see, especially the 135-pound weight class. Yeah. Well, uh, talking to you, Shakur Stevenson. I mean, let, let those hands go. Champ. There you go. That's another fight. Same night, different cards. How could they not get that done? If I'm Shakur, I would not be opening my mouth about people not promoting me. I'd be opening my mouth about them not helping me get the right fights. That will, the right fight will promote itself. You know, he's managed, I think, by Jay Prince, who's like notoriously, you know, part of the music industry and all this stuff. And I think he's a, can be a problematic manager. Because hmm. a lot of his guys seem to kind of run into the wall a little bit. I think he's a... Interesting. Yeah, the management system, you know, is... Uh, I don't know if it transfers directly from the music industry to boxing. And I think he's closing more doors than he's opening for his fighters. Yeah. And putting him in positions that are, frankly, unsafe. He was there when that kid from the Migos got killed. You know, Shakur right. was standing right there. Yeah. It's like, man, go back to the gym, kid. You he's know? got that You're not a rapper. energy, though. Uh, I know? guess so. Yeah, his namesake. I... Yeah, I don't know. I can't comment on the management, but I think the play is very similar to how Bill Haney moved. I think he executed it, you know, his son's career really well, which is don't ever sign these long-term deals because then you're locked in and they don't listen to you, right? They listen to you when you have when they need something from you, which is to re-up and sign another contract. So don't ever sign anything longer than a two-fight deal. Um, I think that's the most effective and co-brand, you know, form your own promotional company if you need to do that in order to have more of a seat at the table. But if I'm Shakur with the notoriety he has at this, I think, inflection moment where if he has a couple more snoozers, he could fade out. But if he has some good performances and locks in a one fight deal, one fight deal, one fight deal and kind of money Mayweather's his way through it, he could build up his esteem and, and have more more of a seat at the table. Yeah, sometimes these guys though they get too big for their britches and they only fight once a year. And if it isn't a great performance, you, they got to you know come out wait a year to prove themselves you know better. There's a great whole scene in boxing that's a little bit more working class. You know this um, Lamont Roach fight that happened on Friday. He used to be uh, managed or promoted by Golden Boy, but now he's not and he's freelance. But they put on a show in DC. They they put it on themselves mm -hmm. like like an independent artist would. Yeah, a, a musician and it was like a five thousand seater and they sold it out. And if you're the guy that's making the money, then that's a great deal for you. So, you know, sometimes these guys, they get these million-dollar contracts, they get all this stuff going, and then they actually don't perform. I, I personally, I have a lot of respect for guys who are fighting for the smaller crowds, but they're out they're doing it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And they're making good money doing it, too, and, and staying active and, and really endearing themselves to the fight fans. I mean, that's kind of an interesting approach. If you're, if you're Shakur and you got your hometown in Newark, where you, where he, I think he has, you know, gotten really good gates, good turnout, uh, and you're fighting kind of the bottom ranks of the division, anyways. It's like maybe you should fight four times a year and just start picking off, start at number fifty ranked, and just stack your wins up till you're like fifty and zero. Yeah, he should sign a contract with like the event center. Right, do you it know? all yourself, promote it yourself, take yes. the gate, do the whole thing right there at home. Yeah, that, and then that's how more fighters should approach this. 
and once you're you know people love to compare records so once you're 30 and 0 35 and 0 40 and 0 it starts to get people get excited because like what well, is he gonna lose finally and that's when you make a tank fight or whatever it is that yeah that builds you get the paid pressure. to maybe lose yeah exactly if you're gonna lose at least you know go out on your check don't yep. go out on your shield <laughs> <laughs> Well, great week of boxing. Uh, we'll be split screening or dual watching or whatever we got to do this weekend. And then we'll be back to break down and we'll have picks uh, Saturday morning for you like usual. Like usual, man. Well, that was a good talk. I got to get to the gym. Yeah. In the meantime, hey, right now, go rate our podcast. Give us hate. Tell us how much money we lost you. We appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, man. Check out the new logo on Instagram. That's Boxing Podcast. Shout out Slick Devious, incredible artist. And just keep keep your head up. Keep your chin down. Hands up, elbows in, yeah. work the jab. Keep it moving. Until then, I'm Dust. I'm Coach. And that's boxing. That's boxing.